Lions and guns and zombies, oh my. Treyarch delivered the hype and Black Ops 6 landed on the shelves about two weeks ago. I'm very excited to talk about the multiplayer of BO6 because damn, is there a lot of mixed opinions for this one. As always, this is an opinion type of video, so just... If you disagree and don't get your panties in a bunch, roughly 650 subs during the making of this video and as always i'm extremely extremely grateful for each and every one of you that have subbed i'm trying to somehow hit a thousand by the beginning of january not looking likely to happen but hey it's all good no need to worry when black ops is back and better than ever um right don't go anywhere and find out doing the rest of this video Thank you everyone watching this. If you do enjoy today's video, make sure you subscribe and hit that like button. It helps me out a ton. Uh, I appreciate that, but let's get back to the video. Ah, remember the good old days of Call of Duty back when COD was like an annual release that we used to get so pumped up for and the whole world would set aside everything game related just to play the new COD? Yes, hell yeah. Well, Black Ops 6 tried to get that kind of hype going and I will say mostly succeeded as far as the hype went, but the real question is, does all the hype lead up to a good product? Hmm. Even doing this review, I'm still trying to fully figure that one out, and so is Treyarch with the constant patches and fixes to repair a lot of unforgiving shit in this game. Let's begin with the maps though. I made a video the other day, and I want to say thank you for that with the unexpected view counts, and you wonderful people giving me all of your opinions in the comments for that. And since that video was so well received, I've been working on an all-time top 10 Call of Duty maps video for about a month or so now, so I'll probably drop that in the upcoming weeks since you enjoyed that Black Ops ranking so much. But yeah, speaking of that previously released video, we need to quickly talk about the maps once again. Another week has gone by since I made my opinions for that video, and I'm not someone that's ashamed to admit when my opinions have changed or when I'm wrong. And I had the pleasure of playing Black Ops 1 and 2 again this week for that other video that I mentioned that I'm dropping later this week. And playing those again made me realize what good COD multiplayer really, really consists of. And Black Ops 6, on the other hand, tries to uh, get you to run around like a chicken with your head cut off most of the time. But Call of Duty is supposed to be more tactical than that. Yes, it's always been up paced and all that stuff but it's still a little slower at the same time. I was reminded by the old Call of Duties that patience and playing it smart is actually how you're meant to play, to succeed at least. So with all that in mind, I re-ranked my Black Ops 6 maps for you real quick in this video, and coming in last place now is Scud. I think it was second to last on the other one, so I, I just still don't find myself enjoying this one most of the time. The layout at the end of the day is just not what I want it to be. Uh, 11 or second to worst in this situation is Low Town. Same opinion as my other video, most of this map is still wasted despite the uh, appreciation that I now have for the slower gameplay playing the old Black Ops again. Just nobody ever goes to the outer part of the map so it just becomes completely irrelevant. At number 10 and moving up from last place in that previous video is now Red Card. This has everything to do with slowing the gameplay down to become more tactical. I still don't think it's a super well designed map which is why it's so low, but at the end of the day, the uh, changing of pace is nice. And now that we are in the top 10 ranking all these, I really want to express that my opinion has super changed as far as the uh, actual map rankings overall in the game period goes. I do not think most of them are decent or good anymore. I think they're probably average at absolute best, probably below average most of them. But anyway, coming in at 9 now is Vault. I don't remember exactly where these middle maps all ranked uh, specifically. When you talk about ma uh, maps as far as like being the middle of the pack go, I think Vault's perfect for it. And while we talk about Vault still to this day, the map rotation in this game is an absolute joke. I've been playing for two weeks and I've still only played Vault six times. I went back through every hour of my footage that I captured and counted and still only played the map six total times. What is that? Number eight, Vorkuta is the same deal basically as Vault. Nothing special about it. Middle of the pack is perfect for it despite it being a snow map, which I usually find myself favoring a little bit, but not in this case. I find myself wanting to skip this one 90% of the time still, so it's in the bottom half of these. And the next two, you could basically flip-flop around whichever order you want, whichever one you think is better than the other. I just think they're basically the same thing now that I've super examined them. Uh, and that is seven and number six being Subsonic and Babylon. Big drop off for Babylon from my last video. Mainly the spawns are way more broken than I was given the first week of playing this. 
And like I said, when I critically look at a Call of Duty, the whole bum rushing style of gameplay just isn't what makes Call of Duty super great at the end of the day. So I don't think that deserves a top five map spot anymore. And speaking of the top five, my biggest shocker in this video is probably Protocol coming in at number five. And I just didn't even like this map from the get go. And it just keeps going up the more and more I play the game. I feel like effort actually went into designing this one. Despite the effort though, unfortunately, it still remains average at absolute best. But hey, that's good enough to make it into the top four in Black Ops 6. As we move into number four, I seem to like rewind a lot more than most others. I went in with that negative feedback in mind the last week or so, and I still never seen anything that made this map really bad like others say that it is. Once again, it's still just average at best, but it, it gets the number four in this game as well. Like Protocol and Rewind would probably be bottom five maps on a different Call of Duty, but this is the game that it's in. Top three begins with another map that I see getting a lot of hate, but personally, I just still enjoy it. I said the same thing in my other video. Maybe I'm super biased for this one, but I dominate every single match that I play here, so why wouldn't I rank it a little bit higher? And that is Delurict. I don't know exactly how you say that still. I don't know if that's the correct pronunciation or not, but you know which one I'm talking about, the little train yard guy. Number two, and this was previously my number one, so it has been to throned, if you will, uh, Payback. And Payback still is pretty solid overall, but it's starting to play smaller and smaller the more the time passes with Black Ops 6. There's some matches that can be just way too chaotic, which pulls this map back down to earth originally from what I thought. I still think when you have a lobby of good players that aren't bum rushing tryhards all the time, this map is pretty solid overall, but I, I'm not, I can't rank it off of just that. Like, I gotta rank it as a whole. And after weeks of playing these 12 maps, the only good one in the entire game for me, and that's number one, Skyline. No, I promise it's not just because of the vibe being similar to Hijacked or anything. I'm in love with the layout. You can take that tunnel underneath that everyone still doesn't seem to be aware exists for some reason. You can have a battle out on the first floor by the pool, or you could take it to the second story for long range combat. Just everything is in play here, and I just think it's the only map that consistently gives me good COD game gameplay. But now that I've repaired my previous map rankings, let's take a deeper look into Black Ops 6 multiplayer as a whole, and let's start with the menus real quick. I might get criticized for nitpicking, but that's also my job on this channel to nitpick and criticize. I think it's absolute bullshit and laziness that these menus are the exact same menus that I played with in the original Warzone about 3, 4, 5 years ago, whatever it's been now. They can't even make Black Ops 6 its own unique game with its own unique menu. It's just part of the Call of Duty app now, like the last few entries have been, and I'm just over it at this point. When I load up Black Ops 6, I want it to look like Black Ops 6, not the other 5 below average games that have been released the past few years. While we're still on the menu topic though, before we enter gameplay, I do enjoy that map voting is still here. I know plenty of CODs have it, but it's something that I enjoy and it's worth giving credit for, and uh, that also goes hand in hand with the negative I have. What's the point of having the map voting if you can't stay with your lobby more than a couple games? This has been an ongoing issue now for a little while now in Call of Duty and I'm not cool with it. I miss the days of getting to know your lobby you've been playing with for hours on end. You learn the players' names, you learn their play styles, you build rivalries, which of course leads you to the legendary shit talking with each other in lobbies in between matches. It's probably a nostalgia thing, but why aren't people allowed to connect with each other anymore? I just don't get it. Is the world too sensitive and doesn't want a, the chance of like hurting soft people's feelings? Still on the menus though, I don't have any complaints or compliments about the uh, guns or classes as far as Black Ops 6 goes, I feel like it's your typical copy and paste class system, which neither is bad or good. You get your usual amount of guns here, you get the perks and all that stuff, uh, you get plenty of gun options in my opinion, the attachments are all there. I will say this is the only COD that I've ever had an issue finding a go-to gun that I'm in love with through a couple weeks of playing it. It also goes in line with the updates that I have a big issue with as far as modern day Call of Duties go. I'll spend a couple weeks trying to find a gun to fall in love with, and even if I do find one, they probably will nerf it a week after. And look, I'm all about updates to fix games, but I hate, and I mean hate, the nerfing weapon things that Call of Duties do now. If a few guns are great in a Call of Duty, then they're great for that year, Call of Duty, whatever. If they're bad, then they're bad and nobody uses those guns. It's okay, the game's only relevant for a year most of the time. Um, and what else here? I mean, score streaks based on how the game plays are almost non-existent, unfortunately. Remember looking forward to getting your UAV to give you an advantage over the other team if you get a mini, like, three or four kill streak? Well, now I'm almost positive it's like six or seven fucking kills just to get a simple UAV. And not only that, 
kill streaks in general are very just hard to sustain compared to the past Call of Duties because of the previously mentioned high paced gameplay this game promotes so much. I hope this style of play changes through time, but I just realistically don't see that happening. But getting into the actual gameplay itself, mechanics themselves is where the positives really start to shine for Black Ops 6. I think the gunplay maybe, maybe the best and smoothest it's ever been. I mean, it's definitely up there. I feel like that's not even debatable. Obviously, that's just technology advancing itself through the years. Guns are extremely responsive and moving around feels as fluid as ever, which does include the new Omni Movement system. Omni Movement, in my opinion, overall is my favorite new feature of Call of Duty Black Ops 6. It's pretty incredible at the end of the day. You can sprint or dive any way you want, any direction you want, whatever you want to do. What more can you really ask for as far as movement goes in a first person shooter? The freedom of choice for moving around is 100% up to you how you want to approach it and you could do literally anything. Even the uh, running and diving into something is optional like hold the crouch button while running is what I'm talking about to dolphin dive or you could just press it and slide instead. Giving options to the players is always a great thing and that's one of my top things for games period. Just give me freedom. But unfortunately, you probably saw this coming. There are plenty of negatives to go along with the gameplay that hold the gunplay back from Black Ops 6 really as a whole being a legendary game. We already talked about the many maps being uninspirational and that goes along with the spawning. That's an all time frustrating level for me at an all time frustrating level for me if I could speak at the English language properly. I don't know why Call of Duty's only give two or three spawn points in every map or why they refuse to switch the spawns so much when it makes sense to switch the spawns in situations. You'll literally die in this game two or three times in your own spawn and the game will be like, well, I should probably swap you, but screw it. Let's spawn you there a couple more times. You'll do it eventually, right? You'll survive. Wrong. And I wish that was the only thing that ticked me off in this game, but there's one more that personally gets under my skin a lot. And yes, there are way too many living in their basement tryhards in this game, but at the end of the day, I could deal with that as well. The thing I can't stand though, is the time to kill in Black Ops 6. Originally, I thought it was just me, but my god is it unbearable sometimes, and I've paid very close attention to it this week specifically because I noticed it the week before that. And okay, I understand if I'm shooting somebody at medium to far range with an SMG, it's going to take an extra few shots, but I'm talking, I put 20 bullets into somebody and it still doesn't kill them. And I'm mean, okay, whatever, but it gets even worse. I'll be two feet away from someone and still have to shoot them 10 plus times to finish the job with an SMG that's meant for close quarter battles by the way do call of duty devs not understand how bullets work though like i'm cool with it taking more shots from distance with an smg but if you're a foot away from each other my smg should put in work and even so 20 bullets at a distance you're not surviving that shit why do i even bother to play this game this does go hand in hand with my next little mini topic here as far as the gameplay goes and that is the assist to give you kills thing in this game originally I 100% despise this and still don't think a shooting game should give you this stuff. But thanks to the dumbass time to kill thing, I don't mind it being here anymore. And what I'm talking about really is the uh, elimination thing where they, if you shoot somebody, no matter what, they'll give you a kill for it, whether you finish the job or not. Well, the issue I really have with eliminating someone this way is you'll literally shoot somebody one time. And then if your teammate goes up and just absolutely annihilates him after that, you'll get a kill for it. Like why? It's just, it's just idiotic to me, but I do love it. Whenever you do 90% of the damage and someone steals your kill, you still get credit for a kill. It works for that aspect, but the whole putting one or two bullets into someone and getting a kill for that is an absolute joke. But okay, it's uh, it's weird talking about only one mode in a game because this doesn't take as long as I expected. I have a couple more little small things and that's really it. We could get out of here. Uh, going with the map design as well, you can get shot in the back pretty consistently in this game from every direction and it will drive you absolutely insane. And also headshots, yes, headshots do not give you any extra damage to the enemy player. Let that one sink in real quick. Like what the, what the hell is that logic that a first person shooter doesn't give you bonus like damage for hitting someone in the head so you might as well just shoot them in the chest just so you know and lastly for this being a run around like a psycho kind of game somehow there still manages to be so many campers sitting in the damn corner waiting for you to walk in a room and i guess some things will just never change with call of duty 
But yeah, that's really all I have to say about the multiplayer as far as Call of Duty Black Ops goes. I originally was going to include campaign and zombies in this, but I haven't been interested in zombies since like Black Ops 2 as far as like super interested in it. And the campaigns just don't grab my attention like they used to. It's cool they brought back zombies, like the round based zombies I mean, and I've heard the campaign is a little longer and better than usual, so honestly let me know in the comments if you want to see a separate review for those two modes and I'll gladly make one. But let's get back to the main focus here, I need to give Black Ops 6 a rating and as far as the multiplayer goes for Black Ops 6, I think I'm gonna give it a confident 6 out of 10 overall unfortunately. I was very hyped for this all summer and I wanted it to feel like the OG Black Ops games again and while it probably is the best multiplayer we've gotten since probably Modern Warfare 19, the maps being underwhelming is really a big thing that holds the game back, the spawning being bad also, and the no life basement dweller tryhards that I mentioned plaguing this game also holds it back from being a really really great game. I'd say still give this a shot, uh, 6 out of 10 is above average on my scale so there will be times it is enjoyable but just not on a consistent basis. Anyways guys though I appreciate it more than you know if you've made it this far in the video. I will be dropping my all-time Call of Duty maps video, the top 10 thing I mentioned earlier, in the upcoming week. So maybe uh, subscribe to stay up to date with that new video when it drops and future videos after that. And if you wouldn't mind dropping a like as well, I'd really appreciate that one too. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day though. That's going to be it for me. Uh, see ya! The fuck? Available. Hold the line, Crimson. This is ours to lose. Hit the thing!